Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is, what is it, Thursday, July 8th, 2021. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. There's no birthdays in the church today, but it is Gary Cronizer's birthday. Gary Cronizer II, our former uh, associate pastor, youth pastor, uh, who's now serving the Lord in Pennsylvania. So, um, but uh, happy birthday, Gary. We love you very much. Um, it is Thursday, so youth group is tonight, 6.30 p.m. Our 180 youth group meets uh, here at Arlington Reformed Church, and that uh, should be a fun time. The, the teenagers get together to uh, worship the Lord, to play games, and to learn from scripture. So it's a great, good time. So I encourage you to come on out if you're a teen. Last week they had a huge crowd, so it was wonderful. Uh, my kids really loved it, and I know that you will as well. Um, that's all the announcements that I have for you today. Uh, I On Sunday, I preached out of John chapter 2, and we talked about this emergency letter that John sent out uh, to the elect lady and her children, which was a code for... Uh, some church that he was sending it to and he was worried that that church would be swayed by false teachers and specifically I think he was worried that they would um, even though they recognized that these folks were false teachers they would uh, welcome them in and be kind to them uh, out of some sense of hospitality that they would have to do it and what John is saying is, no, 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 don't, don't even let them in the door. Um, and the specific false teaching that this false teacher was preaching was that uh, the, the idea that Jesus Christ has not come in the flesh, that Jesus Christ has not come in the flesh. And I mentioned on Sunday that that is not the particular heresy that our church, that our the church of our day is most prone to. Um, in John's day, the idea that uh, that the flesh was evil and the spirit was good, and so therefore uh, Jesus could not have come in the flesh, it was revolting idea, um, that was the current heresy of the day. It was the most attractive heresy, the one that was drawing people away. Um, but it's not the heresy that's drawing people away from the true Jesus today. So I guess the question we have to ask is what is? the heresy that is drawing people away from the true Jesus today. And uh, I've thought about it, and I, this is my own opinion. I'll, I'll, I'll preface it by saying this, it's my own opinion. But um, I think that the, the, the heresy that is most prevalent in the church today, as I look around at the evangelical church, but not just the evangelical church, but much of the, of the, um, the, the liberal church, the conservative church, um, in America, um, and I see it also around the world, is this idea of Jesus as a means to some other end. Jesus as a means to some other end. Jesus as an instrument or as a tool to get something else, to get something else that's seemingly more important even than Jesus himself. And I think we see this in a variety of flavors, right? There's, there's the Jesus who uh, is a means to prosperity, right? The prosperity gospel, the prosperity doctrine, which says that Jesus is a means to health. Jesus is a means to uh, wealth. Jesus is a means to uh, satisfaction in life, okay? Um, that my ultimate goal is wealth or, pros uh, or health or satisfaction. And Jesus is my way of getting that goal. Um, I think that's a, that's a deadly heresy. Um, it's a deadly heresy because Jesus is not a means to some other end. Jesus is himself the end that we pursue. Uh, what, what the Christian Jesus is, uh, uh, is Lord of everything. So he is the one that rearranges your life. He's the one that gives you your priorities. If, if the true Jesus uh, gets a hold of you, it may lead to prosperity, but it may lead to poverty. It may lead uh, to your giving up everything that you have and, and serving the poor. It may mean health for you, but it may mean sickness. If, if through sickness Jesus wants to glorify himself 
uh, through, through your illness, then praise his name. That's the way the real Jesus works. Uh, Jesus is not a means to some other end. Jesus is himself the end that we pursue. Uh, we want a relationship with him and he wants a relationship with us. And this is a subtle temptation because it still has Jesus in it, right? It still has actually what seems like the biblical Jesus, the miracle worker Jesus, the Jesus who rose from the dead. But those stories, the miracle stories, are twisted from being stories that point to the fact that Jesus is Lord. They get twisted to, to instead say, Jesus is the one who heals you. Well, he is the one who heals you, right? Uh, but he's the one who heals you for his own sake, not for your sake. Uh, and, and so this is, this is the, the subtle twist of making Jesus a means to some other end. So we see it with prosperity and health. How else do we see it in our society? Well, we see, see, we see it with uh, the end of politics, right? That there are certain political ends that we want to see, and Jesus is our means for getting them. Uh, maybe it might be freedom, right? Jesus is our means for getting political freedom. Maybe it might be political power. Right? Jesus wants us to be in political power to accomplish his ends, but really what we care about is the political power more than we care about Jesus. Uh, and this is seen on the right and the left sides of American politics. Uh, this idea that Jesus is there to get you what you really want, and what you really want is political power, what you really want is influence, what you really want is, uh, well maybe here's the third one, Jesus has an end to achieve justice. Right? Uh, well, wow, Danish, don't, uh, don't, doesn't Jesus want to establish justice? Absolutely he does. Um, Jesus is king, and under Jesus' kingship, there will be justice. Uh, and as people who follow Jesus as king, we must be people of justice. But it's because we follow Jesus as king, not justice. Justice is not the end that we're pursuing. Jesus is the end that we're pursuing. We, and we pursue justice because of Jesus. We pursue justice uh, for, uh, Jesus, for the sake of Jesus, rather than pursuing Jesus for the sake of justice. You, you see, it's a slight twist, but it's a twist that reorients all of life in a non-Jesus way. It makes something else the goal rather than Jesus. Whether it's politics or prosperity or justice or fill in the blank, if Jesus is a means to some other end, then Jesus is not Lord. You are, right? If Jesus is a means to some other end, Jesus is not Lord. You are. You are pursuing your end, your goal, your dream, and Jesus is just a tool to get there, turning Jesus into your slave rather than your Lord. Uh, maybe it's not your slave, maybe it's your ideology's slave, same difference. Uh, Jesus will not be mocked in this way. This is a mockery of, uh, of what Jesus, who Jesus actually is. Jesus is the King. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is our creator, our savior, our redeemer, our sanctifier. Jesus is Jesus is, right? And anything less than Jesus for Jesus' sake is a perversion of the gospel. And I think that's, again, if you ask me, that in my opinion, Jesus as a means to some other end is the preeminent heresy in the church today that the church needs to be warned against. And when, whenever we see someone preaching Jesus as a means to some other end, we should not allow them into our church. We should not allow them into our home. We should not give them welcome because what they are preaching is Jesus as your slave rather than Jesus as your Lord. And Jesus as your slave cannot save you. Jesus as your slave will not rule. Jesus as your slave is an idol, not the true Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love for us. And Lord, thank you that you are the Lord and the King and the, and the God of this universe. And we follow you and we serve you, not the other way around. I, 
you Jesus did come into this world to serve us, but that's of his own free will, and uh, and that is his uh, way of ruling us. Um, so, Lord, help us not to get the the roles confused. But I pray against the philosophy that sees Jesus as the means to some other end, rather than Jesus as he truly is, our Lord, King, and Master. Lord, I pray that you help us to bow our knee to him and to trust in him. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for Gary Cronizer today on his birthday. Lord, he's such a wonderful dude. I pray for your grace in his life and life of his family. Please bless Rebecca and the kids. Uh, and I pray for all the ministry there in Cory, Pennsylvania. May it, may it flourish. I pray tonight for our youth group here. Thank you so much for Joel and Jordan and, and uh, all the folks who are volunteering and attending our youth group. I, pray, I thank you for the wonderful crowd we had last week. I pray that you bless our youth group in Jesus' name. Lord, may it be a wonderful place of worship and learning and fellowship for these kids in Jesus' name. Uh, Lord, we love you and we trust you. We give ourselves to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Well, thanks for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.